We see stocks up for the day quite nicely. That is going right in line with our weekly vertical crossovers from two weeks ago. We see the S&P 500 up 0.72%. The NASDAQ 100 up a bold 1.24%. And consequently, bonds and gold are down. So let's talk about the practice trades that we are in right now on S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. What do we see going on? We had a weekly vertical crossover back on the week ending the 25th of January. Prior week, we had an up candle. And again, things started off quite slow, but so far they're progressing quite nicely. Again, we have the derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. That price percent oscillator is continuing on an up path, which is beautiful. We go from the weekly to the two-day. What do we see there? We completed the latest two-day candle. We've got a nice up path, particularly the last four days. We have nice movement, price movement well above both the two-day and the weekly trend lines. Derivative oscillators about flat. Price percent oscillator continuing to head up very nicely. We'll put special trainings at the end of this video on the Heiken Ashi candlestick for new folks that are learning what those are all about. 103,000 people have listened to that training, folks. The biggest one on the web when it comes to Heiken Ashi candlesticks means average pace in Japanese. It is completely different from your main type of candlestick. We like it because of how it's different. Think that it works a whole lot better, helps you in a lot more ways. Want to learn about that? You can either find it at our YouTube channel or even better, go to our website and subscribe. And you can see under the trainings there that we have that Heiken Ashi training for you also, as well as the price percent oscillator, which is like the MACD, but again, better. So I want you to have both those trainings. We'll put them at the end of the video today. So that's where we see on the two-day chart. Now let's look a little deeper at the four-hour. If you guys remember, we had a four-hour crossover back on Thursday. And in fact, the jumping in point Thursday was Thursday afternoon. I jumped in on a practice trade myself. Things started off a little slow and then continued to progress up and in fact ended the day up rather nicely. Um, if we look at the uh, end of the day, yeah, up around, I guess the high was around 272. So we'll continue to keep our eye on things. We had a little bit of a dip back on Friday afternoon, but things recovered in the morning and then very much recovered in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator heading up. Derivative oscillators just barely losing some energy there at the end of the day. So keep your eye on things. If you jumped into that somewhere around, and again, it's difficult to use Heiken Ashi candlesticks to get the exact opening, but somewhere around 167, 267, 268, something like that. So continue to keep your eye on things. We'll see how well that practice correct trade keeps going. So we go from the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100 up big time, 1.24% for the day. Same time we had the weekly vertical crossover on the S&P 500, we had one on the NASDAQ 100 and up candle last week. Not as strong. This week starting off quite nice and strong. It's just the first day, so... It, it can be completely different at the end of the week, but we're using it sort of as a marker. Derivative oscillator continuing to gain upward momentum. That price percent oscillator spiking up, which is what we like to see following a weekly vertical crossover. We look at the two-day chart. And again, we see this latest two-day candle hopping up above the two-day trend line. Price move well above both the two-day and the weekly trend lines. Price percent oscillator gaining a little bit of momentum, which we like to see. And I'm sorry, derivative oscillator gaining a little momentum. Price percent oscillator, of course, heading up quite nicely. That is beautiful. And of course, we go to the four-hour chart. And similarly, we had that four-hour crossover in the morning on Thursday. Jumping in point was in the afternoon. Things got a little weak on Friday, but recovered and boomed up in the afternoon on Monday. So we see the price percent oscillators gaining some momentum. Uh, derivative oscillator is also just continue to keep your eye on things. Hopefully, things will continue to move up quite strongly after that weekly vertical crossover gave us a jumping in point. Okay, that's where we are on stocks. If you haven't purchased our book, and you're not quite sure of all the terms we're using with weekly vertical crossovers and all these other things, I want to encourage you to purchase the book, Charting Your Way to Wealth. You'll see a link in the show notes. 
And if you really want to have all the fun stuff, and don't forget our, our um, Patreon members will have a special call-in this Wednesday at 1230. And again, if you're a Patreon member, be aware of that. We will be sending you out the call-in number tomorrow if you want to become a Patreon member and receive all the goodies, which is a special training we do. We help you review the stocks you're interested in once a month for practice purposes. We're not a stock calling service. And then we have that special call-in. Plus, you get our short chart trading. You get our quarterly trading. You get all the great trainings that we have just for our Patreon members and we encourage you to follow the link and become a Patreon supporter if you want to. Uh, don't have to, but we would sure appreciate it. <coughs> okay, <laughs> let's jump into 20-year bonds and then gold. Uh, we see 20-year bonds are down for the day, 0.45%. Candles starting off week for the week. W-E-A-K versus W-E-E-K. We see that we've got a red candle forming with a down wick. That's a solid red candle. Price percent oscillator has gone flat. Derivative oscillator has continued to lose momentum since it peaked all the way back on the week ending the 4th of January. It really been a sideways slide that whole time and still pretty much in sideways slide territory. Once it moves below about the 120.30 mark or so, then it will actually be having pushed through that prior down candle. We, we may sing, see things continue to move down, particularly if stocks continue to move up. Remember, bonds are typically a safe haven for money when stocks are doing well. The opposite is true many times. So that's where we are on the weekly. Weekly is still in a confirmed up move. We go to the two-day. What do we see there? Well, it crossed over going down back on Tuesday the 15th, the two-day candle, in, candle ending then. Went on down for four more days, then up for eight days, and so far, well, this latest candle is a green, is a red doji, which means lots of indecision tending down. Derivative oscillator still losing downward momentum, but that price percent oscillator spiked over going down on that latest two-day candle. And again, it's in a confirmed down move. It's the opposite of the weekly, which means we're not in any kind of trade at this point. Four-hour chart, lots of down movement in the morning, a bit of a recovery in the afternoon, pushing back through that weekly trend line going up. So again, We'll just have to wait and see how things shake out in 20-year bonds. Don't have a guess yet as to which way that's going to go. If it goes in the typical way, most people will tell you, if stocks keep going up, bonds will probably keep going down. But we'll wait and see. The charts are not telling us one way or the other when it comes to bonds themselves. So hang on. Let's move now from bonds to gold. Gold down for the day, 0.43%. What do we see going on there? Well, we're starting the week off with a green up candle. Not a strong one, though. It's all within the bounds of that prior weekly candle and that long wick on top. So not a strong start. Derivative oscillator shows it. Price percent oscillator does, too, where it's weakening. And uh, we, we can see the week starting off that way in gold. We go to the two-day chart. <clears throat> it's still in a confirmed up move, of course, but it's getting quite weak. Actually, price percent oscillator is heading down, although the derivative oscillator has crossed over into positive territory. So we'll continue to keep an open eye, see just what's going on. We are poised again for up moves in gold. We go from the two-day chart to the four-hour and, of course, that four-hour chart is finally ended the day crossing over going down, which is good. Why is that good? Because we've been waiting for a pullback. And perhaps, well, this is a pullback. We'll just have to see if things rotate back over going up. And if they do, it can give us an opportunity to jump into an up move on gold. Remember, that's one of our two ways, jumping in after a weekly vertical crossover or jumping in when the two-day and the weekly are moving in the same direction, either up or down. Then that four-hour chart crosses over in the opposite direction, what we call a pullback, and then moves back in the same direction. When that happens, that's our jumping in point. Stuff's easy to hear. It takes practice to understand and lots and lots of practice to get good at. Because if it were easy, my friends, everybody would be doing it. There are a lot of people doing it, and a lot of people do it poorly. That's why we've established our rules. That's why we have our book and all of our training. We want you to practice with us every single day, and that's the kind of discipline it takes. If you will devote 10 minutes a day to us practicing this, doing practice trades, filling out your daily market worksheets, weekly market worksheets, thinking about this, not overthinking, paying attention to the charts, 
in time, I don't know how much time, but in time, you will get good at this. It is possible, but it will take work. Anybody who says otherwise is a liar. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.